Hey, take a look at this interesting chart that I have made in Power BI. Here I have a few bars for every single month and I have created a target here for 174. And if I move the target up or down, every value which is below the target automatically gets highlighted. Take a look. So if I'm just maybe moving the target up, you can see that more bars are getting highlighted. Not only that, the label on top of the chart also gets updated. Now, how did I do that? What are the techniques involved? That's exactly what I'm gonna talk about in this video. No further ado, let's start. All right, people, I'm in Power BI, working with this chart right here. Now, I would like to talk about the fundamentals or the moving parts of the chart before we delve into the integrities of how do you build this. Now, the first thing in this chart is the chart itself. You obviously have to have a column chart to be able to do some interactivity on top of the chart. So that obviously is part one. Part number two in this particular chart is this constant line that you can see, which is actually connected to this particular slicer. If you move the slicer towards the right, the line goes up. And if you move the slicer towards the left, the line actually goes down so that's part number two we've got to learn how do you make that part number three is the highlighting technique so as the line moves up the target rises and more bar gets highlighted so if you take a look right here i'm just increasing the target and you can see that all of these months that do not meet the target have been highlighted and we need to learn how do you highlight that obviously that is through conditional formatting and the last part in this chart is the title, which is also interactive. Depending upon what is the status of the chart, it picks up how many months have missed the target. So that's your label. And then it also tells you that what is your cumulative loss as compared to the target. The target is 216. And if you subtract uh, all of these months from 216, you're going to get a number. And that number is 203, which is the accumulation of all the subtractions of all the months which have missed the target. So there are four elements that we have to deal with. Let's just knock them off one by one. All right, part number one, the chart itself is nothing spectacular. It's just a standard column chart that I have drawn. In the horizontal axis of the chart, I have the months, which is coming from the calendar table, and the bars represent the total units, which is a very simple measure. I can show you that right here, total units, which is nothing but the sum of the sales table units column, and that constitutes all of these bars. I've also had a slicer up on the top, and now let's just move on to the second part of the chart, which is nothing but having the constant line in the chart. Now, I've already made a slicer here, but I'm sure you know it. The slicers can only be created on a column of a table. So we need to have a table that should have a column that should give us all the values. On top of that, we can make a slicer. So let's just take a look at the table that I have drawn. If you go over to the monthly targets table right here, I've used a very simple function right here, which is generate series, start with 100, go up to 300, which is like counting, and you increment by one. If you want to physically take a look at the table, here is a table and it starts with 100, goes up till 300 right here and increments by one. Using this column of the table, what I have done is I have made a slicer right here. As of now, the slicer does nothing. It doesn't really talk to the table. So I have to fetch the value which is there in the slicer and have that added in the chart, which is the next thing to do. So how do I do that? I'm going to select on the chart, go over to the format right here. In every single standard native column chart that you draw, uh, especially in Power BI, you have this native ability to add a constant line. If you haven't seen that, it's pretty awesome. So click on the chart, go over to the format. I'm right here in the format. In the format, I'm gonna go over to the reference line right here and add a line. Now, there are several types of line that you can add. You can also name it. The line that I would like to add is nothing but a constant line. Now, once you choose a constant line, it gives you the ability to declare what the value of the line is. And I can say probably, hey, I wanna have a line of 50. But the problem is I do not want to have the line of 50. I want to have a line of whatever the slicer says. That's the line that I want to have. For which I have to have a measure or like a calculation that is going to capture this particular value and I will then drop this value in this um, field right here. So I've already created a measure right here. I can show you that, which is nothing but the target value. And the target value is currently giving me 167 depending upon how I move the slicer. So it's just saying max of the table that I have just created, go to the value column and pick up the you know value from there. Simple as that. So that value is going to go in the format uh, reference line right here. And I'm just gonna click on the FX to conditionally choose the value of the line. Uh, go over to the field values and say, this is my target, select that, click on okay. And that is the target line. Now, obviously you can format the line, make it prettier and bolder and improve the slashes and dashes of the line, but at the moment, if you just take a look at the functionality of the line, it's just functioning well, it's moving up and down. That was part two of creating the chart. The next thing that we have to do, build the interactivity 
from the line and the chart in case any of the months are falling below the line the constant line that we have created the months should be highlighted automatically to be able to do that what i have done is written this very simple conditional formatting calculation which is checking between the two things which is total units which are the bars itself and target value which is the line right here now it checks that hey if the total units are more than the target value then show me a light gray which is unhighlighted and otherwise show me this shade of orange which is the hex code that I have generated right here and you can pick up any code that you fancy but that's the code that I have that's what we are going to deploy right now so I'm gonna maybe select the bar right now and go over to the format right here so click on more options and I'm there in the format and I have to pick up the columns and choose how the color is going to be selected for the bar and that's where I have the conditional formatting option which is where I'm gonna say hey this is going to be based on the field value and the field value is nothing but conditional formatting and I'm just going to select that click on OK and any bar that is currently below the target line is automatically going to be highlighted how awesome is that next up is the chart title and I'm a big proponent of writing amazing chart titles and I do not really want to slap a generic title on top of this that a few months missed the target and things like that I am absolutely a believer of writing great chart titles so let's just write a great one in fact let's just create a great chart title so to be able to do that, I have written this measure right here, which is nothing but missed target label. And that is what is generating the text value, which we are going to feed it into the chart. Now, let's just take a moment to understand what this measure is doing at the moment. So the first variable that I declare right here is the months table. And I'm saying that please use the values function and first find the unique months in the calendar table. So assume that we have Jan here, we have Feb here, and we have March here, and we have April here. That's what the output is for the values function. Then I say that, hey, why don't you go in every single row of Jan, Feb, March, and April and find out is the target value more than the total units or not, right? And in case this is true, that means the target is more than the total units, then I would want you to keep that value. So let's just say that um, Jan was above the target, so this stays. Feb was above the target, this stays. And March was above the target, this also stays. And also I'm saying that, hey, in this filter, I would like to apply an additional condition that um, the calendar should only consider the data up until the end of the sales table. And while you're actually taking a look at this Power BI file, you should just open up my calendar table and you should take a look at this column that I have created, which is dynamically taking a look at when the sales tables end. All right. Once I have been able to build this little table right here containing only three months which are below the target, then I simply count the number of rows in this table. So I'm just saying count rows of this month table that I have created. This measure is going to give me how many months have missed the count. The next thing that I do is I go again in this three months table, which have missed the targets right here. And I say that, hey, why don't you subtract? How much did you miss it by? So in this table, why don't you take a look at the units? and take a look at the targets and subtract. So target minus units, target minus units, and target minus units. This is going to give you a number, and why don't you sum these three numbers up, and that is nothing but the missed values calculation right here. And then I do some fancy concatenation in the end, and I say, hey, take a look at the count of the number of months that I've missed the target, write some label right here, write a cumulative loss, and then you just format the loss in a certain way. That's all about it. Now, once you have this text generated, I'm gonna feed this text into my chart right here. I'm just gonna go over to the chart right here and go over to the format uh, right here. And in the title, I'm gonna say, I'm not gonna write a generic title, I don't like that. I am gonna write a smart title that I have created, which is going to be based off the field value, which is title right here, miss target label, and say okay. And that is the smart label that we have got. So. Four months have missed the target, sure enough, one, two, three, and four, because that is a measure. The measure recalculates the values over and over again, and the cumulative loss is 119. Now, if I just maybe decrease the target, you can see that now only two months have missed the target, and the cumulative loss is 25. And of course, if you change any slicer which is linked to this chart, obviously the chart is gonna respect that, and uh, maybe change the values dynamically as per the current slicer selected. All right, that's been it. Let me know how did you find this one? Are you going to use this in any of your reports? Please do let me know the use case scenarios where you think this chart is going to be absolutely crazy, helpful, 
in the kind of work that you do. If you have any questions around this, please feel free to drop in a comment and I will be glad to reply. In the end, a quick shout out about my DAX and my Power Query training courses. In case you are a beginner and you'd like to start learning Power BI in a structured way, learn the hard parts of Power BI, Power Query, DAX, data modeling, learn them well and then even move on to solving harder problems even of your own data, I'd highly recommend that you take a look at my courses. It is going to be super awesome. Now, in case you like this video, I have another video on target versus actual charts in Power BI. In case you don't want that constant line, you want the, the target value to be different for all different months, then go take a look at this video on target versus actual. So you're also going to find this video superbly beneficial. Thanks so much for watching this and I will see you guys in the next one. Cheers and bye now.